Mane vana se ma Pen Dream TV. Pen Dream TV die o se dem yopo. You are once again welcome to Pen Dream TV, the only channel that brings you the best and latest updates in politics. If you are new here, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell for more updates. Like and also share to other members to watch as well. You can equally leave a comment after watching or send us a voice note on our WhatsApp number, which is 0277-128-777. Show it on your screen as well. Thank you. I want you to join me listen to what you have for you to differ. Uh, for her comments on this, Alas and Hamdan in Yohini says, When elected as an MP, whether under party A, party B, or as an independent, the MP's role is not permanently tied to the party that supported their election. The concept of vacancy refers to the present term and not the future, as it will be impossible to predict an MP's success in future elections. For the Supreme Court to rule that this principle applies differently to a party affiliated MP than to independent reflects a peculiar interpretation applying the law without practical reasoning undermines its purpose alasan thank you very much Emmanuel Boeque is also joining us says Ghanaians how can you leave the care of the fish into the hands of the cats and turn around to ask the cow where the fish is meaning how can you leave the rule of law into the hands of a lawyer who does not understand and obey law and think the laws of the land will work for those who are expected to uphold and defend and protect and preserve the rule of law are the same ones destroying our systems of law. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Sami Zamaku says, this Supreme Court judge is only doing the bidding of the MPP. Even when you see the demeanor of the Chief Justice delivering her ruling, as if she has a grudge with somebody, Ghana is finished. There's also Petron Solo who says the Supreme Court cannot make a law or interpret anything for us to accept because they are supreme. We cannot obey an unlawful law because we are citizens also agree with them that the birth certificate doesn't guarantee your citizen citizenship. That is why they have the free range of supremacy. Uh, thank you. Nasser Mohammed is also joining us. Says, Lawyer makes a very fundamental point. The Ghana constitution does not determine the membership of any party. In the first place, membership of the parties are voluntary decisions but subject to the rules of only the party and not the constitution. There was nothing to interpret. The ruling appeared to be rewriting the constitution through the back door. Uh, thank you. Francis Gordon says, We have a Supreme Court who doesn't see the interest of a country by the interest of the executive arm of government only. The Supreme Court in general is in bed and in dreams of the government and are not serving the interest of Ghana. It is a shame that common sense and logical reasoning are not being applied by some of our leaders in public office. Uh, those are some of the comments you're sending to us. There's, uh, okay, there are two that I'd just like to go to before I go to Jifa. Abdul Ghaffar Mohammed says, Can the Supreme Court compel both major my majority and minority to participate in parliamentary sessions? For me, the MPs should focus on their constituencies to be elected or re-elected. He sent that from Tamale. And then this one also from Emmanuel Yaupe Payson says, Please, can you tell us? Who is deceiving MPP that there was no... Okay, he is talking about something else. Thank you very much for sending uh, that, those comments. I'm, I was reading from the Facebook page. Keep those comments coming. And of course, you can send some to our test and WhatsApp line. This is the mother of all talk shows, Alaji and Alaji. Madam Tega. Good morning. Good morning. It's back to be here after a few months. And um, I'd like to really comment my brother here. It was nice listening to him. Because I think that um, with the matter of the vacant seats, it is quite clear there is very little confusion or no confusion at all as to what the position of the Constitution is on the matter. And if I am not wrong, there is no Constitution in Ghana that tells us that the Supreme Court um, portrays themselves as God. That cannot be questioned. In fact, um, as a matter of fact, you realize that the job of the Supreme Court actually is to help us with the Constitution, or is supposed to be guided by the Constitution. And I don't stand to be corrected by anybody because I know that what I am saying is what it is. And so, just like my brother said, if you are going to court, you have your facts and you have your Constitution well read you are able to predict to a very high extent that this is supposed to be the outcome. That is not what we've been seeing lately. Lately means not just this particular case, but in very subsequent cases. And 
cases that are closely linked with the NPP. You listen to the comments of Ghanaians and it is disappointment, one disappointment after the other. It tells you that eventually the Supreme Court is forgetting the ultimate power actually lies with the people and not them. That there is a stage where people can really get fed up and when there is togetherness or conclusively when people come together it can override anyone's power because the power of God is the power of the people or the power of the people is the power of God. I'd want to just touch a little bit on um, the two justices that dissented during the ruling or after the ruling. Justice Lovelace came out um, to explain that really she thought that it was that issue, that this issue was supposed to be handled, um, handled by the High Court and not the Supreme Court. Because the Constitution says it very clearly that this is a party Constitution interpretation, then to the High Court. It doesn't even get to their level. So she has just, you know, withdrawn entirely from it. Now, Justice Amadou, that is where it becomes very interesting. Because when we have very bold justices coming out to also say their position without fear or favor, it really gives us hope that it's not all lost. Because the issue was as simple as that he claimed that it was that. It was so far off. And I would like to just quote what he said, if I'm allowed to. That his position, let me just read so that I do not misquote. And um, he said, I do not hasten to proclaim that I have apprehended with despair the majority's conclusion of the suit. But I state with utmost difference to Honorable Chief Justice that the rest of my brethren in the majority, and the rest of my brethren in the majority, that not only do I fundamentally disagree with their conclusion, but I also find the decision an aberration to the established and accepted judicial position to this court. And I want to just highlight this part again. I find the decision an aberration to the established and accepted judicial position of this court. And this is by Justice Sanko Amadou. It's an aberration. It's so far off the established judicial composition that they are used to. This is not even close to it. And that is emphatic. And I don't think even his colleagues can prove that what he's saying is not right. Because in truth, you see that I, Jifa Tega, seated here, will be determined as a party executive by my party constitution, like my brother said. It's as simple as that. The Chief Justice has no play in it. No other institution has no play in whether I am an NDC member or not. It is my party's constitution. And indeed, not even my chairman or flag bearer has any say in it because the party has rules. Because we do not want the power of one human being to override an entire organization of society, that is why we have a party constitution or a constitution that governs any society organization at all. And this organization, in this case, is a party. And so until I have done something that goes against my constitution and I am removed by executives, I remain a party member once I am in the, 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 the good books of my party. So my party will determine that for me. And now the Constitution now says that if you are no longer a member of your party, so the Constitution is able to determine something to just an extent. That extent is whether you are a member of the party or not. They cannot decide whether you are a member of the party or not. And so that is where their powers lie. And so if my party says I'm not a member, not by words, but by their own underlying constitution, then the, the, the Supreme Court cannot decide for my party or not my party. So I ask you, I am no longer a member of the party because my constitution clearly states how I become a member or how I desist to be a member of the party. How would I represent a party that I am no longer a member of? This is my question today that I am not a member of NPP. Let me say I'm not a member of NDC anymore. 
and the courts, or should I say the, um, the parliament, sorry, parliament is represented by members of a party. If you are independent, you are in another group. You are also representing yourself because you are an independent candidate. So MPP here, NDC here, we determine majority by numbers. So if we have 10 independent candidates, they are in one group. They are not shared onto the two uh, major political parties. They are in one group. NPP here is in one group. NDC here is in one group. I am not a member of the party. I am in parliament. I am now an independent candidate because I have declared so. And in fact, I have gone forward to take a form, pick a form, and I'm running, contesting somebody who is now a member of the party running for that same seat. So I ask you, let's say the people in MPP, um, the MPP um, MPs in parliament are 100. We have 275 constituencies, right? And let's say that we have um, NDC 105, and independent candidates are around 70. I have given very close calls here. NPP 100, NDC 105, independent candidates 70, a, whoop, a whooping 70. It still makes NDC the majority in parliament. The fact that we have 70 independent candidates does not mean that they are part of NDC or that they are part of MPP or that we have to split them between, um, amongst NDC and MPP. So your seat is vacant. You are an independent candidate. You are no more representing your party because you are not part of your party. So how do you now Supreme Court give this ruling that it is unconstitutional by the speaker to, to declare the seats vacant. Truth be told, this issue was not even up to the speaker. It is a, constitu it is a party constitution level case. It is clear there is no confusion about that. I find it very terrible and appalling that um, we have people in some arms of government stooping this law, looking drastically um, um, partisan, looking drastically partisan. So now let me go to the Formina case. We were here in 2020 when the Formina MP decided to run for independent, reasons best known to him, that he is no longer a member of the party, he had lost his, um, his primaries and wanted to run independent. The then Speaker of Parliament, Michael Quay Jr. or um, Professor, um, um, yes, Professor Michael Quay declared that that seat was now vacant and that, in fact, the former MP was not even representing MPP and ceased to become a member of parliament for the MPP, so ceased to become um, a member of the MPP party. It was clear and it was simple. The MPP understood this, they accepted this. The, uh, Professor Michael Quay himself accepted this and understood this. And it was clear for everybody. He even went ahead to even make comments about how disappointed he was in the MPP candidates, or should I say the now independent candidates at the time. He even went forward to say that. I am asking Ghanaians as a whole, should it have been the other way round? Should it have been the other way round? Where one seat was determined to put NDC into the minority instead of majority, because I'm now turning the situations around. What do you think would have been? Would it not have stood its ground that if it was an MPP, it was an NDC candidate who had gone for independence, and now we have declared his seat vacant, and that one candidate could determine whether NPP would go into majority, from minority to majority, and NDC vice versa. What situation would it, would it have been then? I am not even sure NDC would have decided to contest the issue because truthfully, it is in the constitution. He is no more a member of the party. If you had anything to do, you should have persuaded the person or handled the, the, the issue in your home. In this case, at the party level to make sure the person doesn't go independent or the person probably wins the primaries, however it is that you wanted to decide. You realize that when it is with MPP, when it is for MPP, the case is different. So now it reminds me of a certain GFA president who said that he has the president in his pocket. I am just thinking aloud, does somebody have the Supreme Court in their pocket? Does somebody have the Supreme Court in their pocket? 
I would want to make a reference to another case, a very popular case, the Techiban South case. And this here, I want to really draw the issue of humanity, the issue of whether the, 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 the people of Ghana is at the center of the priorities of the Supreme Court. Because that is what it should be. The entire, and all the arms of government are supposed to have the people of Ghana at heart and Ghana in itself at heart. We have an issue of gross injustice. We've not finished collating the results of Techiman South, but the results have been declared. Ghanaians and citizens, they say they will not agree because this is not supposed to happen. There was so much fight, so much chaos, and it ended up having eight people losing their lives. Let me subtly remind Ghanaians that till now, the president of the Republic of Ghana, Akufuado, has not even talked about this issue, touched on this issue, and commiserated with the people or the family of the deceased. And it's eight years now. That going aside, there is gross injustice. People have lost their lives. These two are supposed to, are supposed to just shake the entire system. And so NDC goes to court and wants to place an injunction on the swearing in of that member of parliament. It goes haywire. Everybody knows the justices or the, the, the court has agreed that indeed there is something happening here. There is some sort of injustice. Let's wait and prove and whatever, whatever. But however, we are going to swear him in because how can we deny the people of um, Techiman South a representative in parliament? That is during the first few months first few months of the term of office and the most important thing for the very patriotic and Ghana loving justices is that we cannot deny them a representation work has not even really started but it is so important that we love Ghana so much that we cannot deny the people of Tashima South a representation in parliament and that alone is enough for you to go ahead and overlook this gross injustice and swear in the fraudulent member of parliament. Okay, we understand that they love Ghanaians so much. And why not? Because you are supposed to have Ghana at heart, right? So let's go to the issue of Asin North by elections. Because it is an issue of um, we holding on to, um, what, what's it, a member of parliament acting his role. Okay? So what is the Asin North issue? Citizenship that he has allegiance to another country. We all know his name, James Jechikwesen, full Ghanaian. He is not white, he is not even yellow. He is black, hails from Asin North, has lived in Ghana, has lived outside Ghana, has an issue of dual citizenship, okay? Has applied to revoke that citizenship and is going on with his campaign. Now on November 2020, in November 2020, I don't, I like to ask questions when I'm interacting with people, but I forget myself when I'm on TV, I feel that I have an audience. I would have asked, when do we vote? December 7th, it has always been that. November 2020, you now receive officially that you are no longer, or you no longer have any allegiance to any other, uh, any other country. Now it is only Ghana. That is before he gets the opportunity to serve his, um, his um, constituency. The justices, after he has won the elections, outstandingly, the ruling on the case is that he has double allegiance. And so he is not supposed to be MP. Now the case is in court, somebody has taken him to court, okay? So the case is in court. We understand that somebody elsewhere wants to really address the issue and make sure that what is right is done. We understand that it is in court. We are all moving. But then, whilst it's in court, let me just serve the people because these people too do not, do not deserve to have no representation in parliament. The people of Asin North, just like it happened in Tachiman South, the same should be applied here. So let me just get the opportunity whilst it's in court to at least serve the people. Whatever the court decides is what will stand. So if at the end of our, 
uh, a court case, you decide that I am not eligible to, you know, hold up or pre present myself as an MP, so be it, then we go forward from there. The court actually um, released a restraining order on Jachi question to stop posing. When you say pose, what do you mean? That the person was, was not elected? To stop holding himself as an MP because of what case? Dual citizenship. When the person is a born Ghanaian, raised Ghanaian, speaks chi to everybody else, this was it. So in this case that I would have called that there wasn't any lives lost, there wasn't any gross injustice, there was just a small issue of um, um, country affiliation or double allegiance. They refused to let him play his role for over a year and a half, Senna. For all the while that he was in court, this same court, but when eight lives were lost, when uh, there was a clear issue of gross injustice, they overlooked it and what? Allowed this MP to be sworn in. I ask myself, is it because Jachi Kwesin um, is an NDC? A lot of Ghanaians have asked themselves this question. Is it because he's an NDC? Today, people are becoming bolder. First, when, at first, when we're talking about justices, people try to summarize their issue, but people are becoming bolder. You feel that people are getting fed up. So why is it good for the goose and not good for the gander? Why is it good for Techiman South and not good for um, Asin North? Why should the, the interpretation of constitution of the constitution always be thrown as though it is the eventual preference of whichever justice is presiding on a case? I feel the same thing is happening with this issue of vacant seats. And it is high time, and I really must comment. I am not in the place to, but I really must comment Justice Amadou for coming out to clearly interpret his own knowledge on the Supreme Court issue because he had the opportunity or he had the right to decide not to comment at all after dissenting from it. But he commented, and it really made so much sense to us. Senna. If I go again, I'm going to talk about the comments that our own father, um, Chachu Chikata, made. Because, I mean, he was called up to grant a few interviews on this particular case. And that is something that I want to remind Ghanaians of. And I want to quote again so that I don't make any mistake. That indeed the Constitution can be overthrown not only by people in military gowns, when they say military gowns, we know that they are coup d'etats and the military always try to overthrow governments and ignore an entire constitution. But in this case, we are reminding Ghanaians that the constitution cannot only be overthrown by people in military gowns, but also by people in wigs and gowns. And when we say wigs and gowns, we don't mean women who are having weddings. We mean by people who are supposed to protect the law. People who are probably lawyers or even judges. And if it goes on in this case continuously, where cases, or should I say rulings, have been made without any substantial reference to the Constitution or any reasonable backing, then you're overthrowing the Constitution. You are throwing it away. Maybe overthrow is such a very huge word, but you are throwing it away. And I really deplore or implore the, the justices to realize that this game of politics really ends every term or two. And that NPP is eventually going to come out of power. And I tell NDC people who are out there looking at us, that if they are setting this precedence, then we should calm down. Because eventually we have 21 days to elections. So, so this ruling will really not have any proper effects. Because there is going to be a change of government come December 2024. But then, after it is gone, the NPP is really going to reap what they have sown. The justices in the high court are going to reap what they have sown. So if it is good for them, if they have really been sincere, should a similar case emerge when we are indeed in power, I hope nobody would come out to interpret things differently. I really hope no one will come out to interpret things differently because that is the precedence they've set. 
And that is what we are going to go in accordance with. I will just leave my um, comments here and then just um, conclude. Just conclude with a word or two. And Senna, my word won't be for the Supreme Court. It will be for the people of Ghana, especially people that we call floating voters, especially people who are not particularly within the MPP and this is some people like the butterfly people and the others. That aside everything that is happening, if the party, if the country should be placed first, they would really be able to compare the non-partisanship attitude of certain governments. Example, like the NDC, non-partisanship attitude when we are in government. When we can decide to take, when we can decide to be in court and boldly lose a case or two, because indeed the constitution should come first. But when there is a strictly partisan attitude that is really affecting the democracy of the people affecting the power of the people because indeed you have people who think there is no tomorrow I want people to consider that when they are come to vote I cannot talk without making reference to the December elections I want people to consider that people who are patriotic and think of Ghana at large to really consider that there is a party that is healthy for this country and there is a party that is toxic or poisonous for this country. And without wanting to give several examples, we'll just give this particular example to tell you that the MPP government is toxic and poisonous for the democracy or for the growth of the NDC. And a party like that should be removed without thinking twice, be removed entirely from this country through the election 2024. That is the only way that we can heal as a country. We can gain our, um, our self-respect and dignity back. We can reset the economy and the entire country. And I feel that uh, the few justices that may or are, are, are looking like partisan justices will start feeling, or should I say, will start being in line with how the MPP are feeling. And eventually, when you realize that there is an overthrow, or should I say, there is a change of government through the election 2020, 2024 that is coming, you feel that the justices will also start packing by themselves, by themselves, because they realize that their power or whatever supports them has left, or whoever they are backing has left. I hope that um, with the last statement that Justice Amadou Tanko said, that he hopes that very soon this ruling will be changed and will be rectified because he feels, not just feels, he knows that it's a very wrong ruling. And I also hope, and back his statement, that I hope it will change, that I hope it will be reversed so that we know that these justices, or should I say the Supreme Court, is really now healing and taking their feedback as a non-partisan arm of government. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, Jivatega is a deputy national men's organizer of the National Democratic Congress. A few comments from those of you who are listening and also watching us. There's um, this one from Dr. Kofase Bifio Sena. Salute to you and your guests. I don't know if I'm getting confused or not. Isn't it a paradox that the learned compatriots who boycotted the, constitution, the Constituent Assembly comprising market women, cobblers, and masons will today seek to interpret the simple language of those ordinary people? I need education. Uh, good morning to you, Doc. And then there's this one from Papa Bisi who says, uh, under Nanado's rule, our country is temporarily very, very sick. That's judging from all the negatives in every sector. For the benefit of our children, grandchildren, and generations here at Tambon, we must not allow this pattern to continue. Hence, reset is needed via 7 December general election. It's then that from Accra, Papa Bisi, thank you. There's a uh, this one also from uh, Prince Aaron Koforidua who says, Today, most of MPP MPs and communicators are running away from their own constitution. We said, 
that once we are filed to contest as an independent candidate or you declare to support an independent candidate against the MPP candidates, you have forfeited your membership automatic because today Supreme Court has affirmed Afanyo Makin's case against Speaker Alban Bagbing in Parliament. Hey, wow. So what happens to the former MP who is independent candidate and now an MPP candidate? The MPP's hypocr hypocrisy is very legendary and MPP must know what goes around will surely come around soon. That Prince Harry, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Doc says, Senna, what a shock of a Supreme Court interpretation. So henceforth, an MPP sympathizers can enter Parliament under the cloak of NDC, especially in a constituency where NDC is strong. And then when he gets to Parliament, switch to MPP. And by this ruling, that should be okay. Nobody can do Foco about it. In any case, if Article 97 is for the future parliament, then why is the article in the constitution in the first place? Because no seat is guaranteed in the next parliament anyway. Because going into an election, every parliamentarian is inadvertently saying that the seat is not my bona fide, so re-elect re re me to the seat next parliament. Thus, is common knowledge and not written in the constitution. That's Article 97 for vacation of seat cannot be for the next parliament because for the next parliament every member indirectly vacates seat for re-election anyway what a ruling i send that from la thank you for that um let me conclude with who's bonnie who's a senator Ghanaians made a very big, big mistake when anado started to squeeze our balls we chose to be quiet instead of going out there to let him know that we hate what he's doing it's not too late, my fellow Ghanaian. 7 December is just around the corner. Arise, 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 Ghana youth for your country. That's what Bonnie will send that all the way from Sweden. Thank you for staying tuned. Pen Dream TV really appreciate and cherish your time. Please, if you're a new member here, please, I'll urge you to subscribe to the channel before logging out. Turn the notification to Oppo so that you'll be notified duly of any information that will be loaded onto the channel. Thank you. Uh, they did come out. I'm in the pending TV. Now, nah, so far, so good. Say, so, open okay, online portal. I work down. Ah, you can share, you can follow, you can comment here. To my best of knowledge, without any biases, I uh, have pending TV.